Um, so, yeah, my name is Patricia Sankowska. Um, I am a strategic consultant uh, in a um, digitalization unit of a German engineering company, Seacon in Leipzig, a big city uh, south from Berlin. And today I'm going to be presenting a small part of my research, uh, of my PhD research, uh, and be talking about planning instruments and urban development management tools for smart city with a special focus on a city logistics work in the southwest Germany. This is the city from above. So, and this is how my presentation as well as my conference paper is structured. So I'm gonna go from a rather abstract European level towards uh, a case study Ludwig's work. And, oops. Actually, the main um, purpose of my presentation is to show uh, um, a well-working and agenda. Through implementing it, through integrating it um, into the local urban uh, development strategy, and um, the first thing that is actually, and the city of Luxembourg uh, took the way of back to why right, it is. Oh, this is not actually the slide. Oh, there is something wrong with the presentation, unfortunately. No, it's still not. There is like one slide missing. Okay, so I'm gonna improvise a little bit. <laughs> so in 2007, and the uh, Leipzig Charter on Sustainable uh, European Cities was set, uh, it is, uh, which main goal is to was to set a common principles uh, and instruments on how to secure <coughs> the sustainable and integrated development of unique European cities so that they remain historically correct, but they develop themselves in a very uh, uh, sustainable and inclusive way. And one of the <coughs> suggested measures was to make a greater use of, um, of um, integrated urban development concepts and policies, um, <clears throat> which uh, then is reflected on, in Germany on, also on a national urban de development policy level. And um, those, this uh, integrated aspect, actually, of the, um, of the urban planning uh, to integrate every urban related topic like mobility, house, uh, social efforts, housing into one comprehensive um, develop, urban development strategy and not to focus on few specific parts. So national or, um, urban development policy uh, focuses on six key issues which resembles the key questions of Leipzig Charter. Oh yeah, this was the first slide, by the way. <laughs> this was the missing slide. Now I'm pretty curious how the presentation is going to look like. And also, um, this national policy um, makes a great empathize uh, in Germany on urban development funds, fundings, and urban planning law, which, um, which main goal is to um, correct the existing urban deficiencies for example, through making a use of, uh, from diverse urban development funding programs. But to, in, in order to be giving those funds from the government, the government requires an in-depth spatial anal analysis and a comprehensive integrated urban development concept in order to really be given the money. Um, so then we come to the, to the city level. Uh, and to the core, actually, of uh, the planning myth method that was that is pursued by the city of Lux Ludwigsburg, so my case study. Uh, ISEC is, uh, uh, is a German abbreviation of Integrierte Stadtentwicklungskonzept, and I'm probably going to say uh, ISEC because it's like a little bit easier for me right now. Uh, ISEC is an informal planning method uh, in German uh, in Germany, in, informal means that 
its content and way of pursuing is not strictly uh, described by, by the building code. For example, like zoning plans, so the content of, and the way of pursuing such planning method is very flexible and differs from city to city, which makes sense actually. Uh, uh, and regarding to urban development that might be very different from city to city. So it's an informed planning method and strategy that assures sustainable corrections of existing urban deficiencies and specializes commonly set objective based on in-depth planning and situational analysis. And basically what ESIC is, is really a long-term um, development strategy that is transforming a concrete area uh, within fixed time and f financial f um, frames. And it needs always, and this is like the, the basic premise of such concept, it needs to involve all, all city actors and remain a very, very inclusive character. And it of course needs to take under consideration the existing um, plans and um, the way of integrating people in this uh, development concept need to be mostly pursued for uh, the well-moderated open participation process or workshops. This is how it can look like. It might be either a graphical plan or it might be simply a strategy, but always with, part, uh, with this participation aspect. And then we come to Ludwigsburg. So, um, quick presentation of the city. It is a middle-sized city uh, in the southwest Germany, near to Stuttgart. It has around 100,000 uh, citizens. Uh, and it has actually three identities. The first one is, uh, it was, it is a barrack plant town from 1718. And you can see like a very beautiful historical structure, uh, urban structure in the city core. On the other side, and this is also a pretty artistic city. At least they tried to do their best to um, make the most of the use from and their really nice structure. But it also it was also a, one of the biggest garrison cities in Germany and, and the biggest in this region, which made, as we know, in the Second World War, a huge impact on how cities were used and how they look afterwards. Uh, and it's also a very industrial city, <coughs> uh, highly influenced by very well-developed Stuttgart, uh, which is a home for companies like Porsche, Daimler, Bosch, Siemens, etc. Uh, so why Ludwigsburg actually uh, use ESEC and what is what is what is its form? So actually, the main uh, role of ESEC in Ludwigsburg is really from one side to make uh, analyze, uh, to, to analyze the city and the current needs, to build up a very integrated strategy, but also to manage through, uh, through the urban planning con uh, context uh, the whole city and how it really, it really works. So <clears throat> ESEC enables analysis and definition of current cities, situation, and needs through, uh, uh, through categorizing those needs and developing them into development objectives, which are then set into the development strategy of the city. And uh, in order to execute this strategy, um, there are measures, instruments, and projects that are chosen uh, for uh, the execution. Within and after the execution phase, they are then uh, evaluated and controlled. And it's a really a repetitive management cycle, as well as a long-term development strategy. Um, but as every strategy and as every plan, when it does not have a form, uh, some kind of formal structure within the government, the, there is no, um, mm, there is no, it's not that obvious that like the goal is going to be really uh, executed. So the city um, set up a completely separate department unit called Sustainable Urban Development, which gathers all the sub urban related stuff and um, uh, directs them in such a way that really uh, secures 
uh, the objective which were commonly set by uh, citizens by all city state and this department unit is a to the major of uh, Ludwigsburg as well as the municipal council which a quick decision making especially when it comes to household distribution um, <coughs> quick uh, a uh, quick, quick theory of uh, components of Isaac Ludwigsburg. So uh, each of uh, the elements of Isaac is uh, part of so-called integrated sustainability management cycle. <laughs> um, and the core one is our so-called future workshops that take place every three years where every city stakeholders, especially citizens of all kinds, it doesn't matter, what kind of race, what kind of gender, it doesn't matter who, everyone that is interested in making impact on their, on their realm is invited. And uh, there, are elf, uh, there, are elf, <laughs> there are 11 topics called master plans and uh, within future workshops, these are like discussion topics like energy, housing, uh, mobility, and if I am interested in talking about mobi mobility issues and the concerns that I have about them, then I can go to this group. Um, and those uh, topics are then, and these are always the same topics, they're called master plans. And master plans are really based on this very participative approach towards goal finding and needs recognition. And they have also always strategical goals, how to achieve those, yeah, strategy, how to achieve those goals, commonly set goals, measures and projects that secure the execution um, of those goals. Um, also, what is very important for the city is to follow UN's sustainable development goals, which as you see, some of the categories are really implemented in the master plans. Um, to make, to control a little bit this whole comprehensive um, system, the city set up nearly a so-called communal management information system, with, uh, which main <coughs> function is to really control all of the master plans, measures, and related projects. And we can see in which uh, executional phase uh, one project is, <coughs> if, if it's uh, done on time, if it's not, uh, what are the resources, etc. cetera. Um, there are also some, <coughs> um, some um, parts of the city that are, for example, more deprived, that have very special needs, and therefore uh, there are so-called integrated district development concepts, which concentrate really specifically on districts and their needs, because sometimes it is the fact that they need a little bit more special care. And they are uh, then uh, connected to the master plans. And to make out of it a cycle, um, there is evaluation, there is an evaluation method, um, which is a report uh, where all the sub, uh, where all the topics, uh, discussion topics, uh, all the projects and their outcomes are gathered and then really evaluated. And this report is then a base for next future workshop as well for the uh, very fact-based um, objective ev evaluation of the current state. So just to learn from our own mistakes and to put, <coughs> and to put the uh, further measures and to make them a little bit better than before. This is the chronological development of ESEC from 2004. Uh, and right now, the main topic is digital agenda, uh, Ludwigsburg. I uh, divided it into three elements. And then from this point, I would like to say that some of the information that I'm going to present here, they're not in my paper because um, 
I did an interview with one of the uh, with, with team lead of this of one digitalization unit, and I could I could not put it as a source. So <laughs> you you're you're going to be given uh, some inform additional information. So <coughs> digital agenda Ludwigsburg probably as you notice Ludwigsburg love strategy and digitalization is not an <laughs> exception. So there has to be of course a digital. Uh, strategy for Ludwigsburg. It's called Digital Agenda Ludwigsburg, and it's based on the roof, <coughs> uh, on the roof strategy with uh, three p um, p uh, pillars: pillars, users, pr processes, data, and it's actually based on the typical digital infrastructure. <coughs> Um, the whole uh, topic of digitalization was one of main focuses of the discussions uh, in the last, last year's edition of Future Workshops, where citizens um, <coughs> uh, gave opinions on how the digitalization should be really pursued in a... Oh, sorry. Thank you very much. <laughs> sorry, I have an allergy. <laughs> um, um, and um, <coughs> sorry, um, yeah, the, ci the citizens gave their like view on how they would like to uh, see the city uh, in the times of digitalization. And the city, as well as the citizens, uh, came up to the conclusion that for them, at least for this, uh, for now the digitalization is not won't be given an, another master plan topic, but it should be rather a helpful, useful additional tool to make people or people's life better. So, but it's not a goal itself. Um, so <clears throat> there were some projects and measures that were uh, taken on the agenda that should be executed. And there is a team called Digitalization Controlling Group. In Germany, it's all about control. Uh, <laughs> which stuff is made up from really the uh, most important regarding decision-making processes in a municipality like Spire of the whole city. Uh, the CDO and the head of the digitalization controlling group with uh, whom I uh, did the interview. So I know that <laughs> these are very valuable information. <laughs> and they're, what they do, they're like this legislative and controlling body. So every project and every measure is evaluated by them. Um, and because the stuff is made up from people that really hold the decision making, uh, like every decision on project is made pretty quickly, and every decision on the, of the project is also uh, has also reasoning that which is reflected then in a household distribution. So everything is like checked if you really need, for example, that kind of project or if this project <coughs> should be, uh, should be um, um, going further because it's, for example, on, uh, financially on, um, um, on, uh, not really reasonable. So everything is really bound with the household distribution and this is why it actually works pretty well. And <clears throat> so that you know, when I was talking about future workshops for citizens, for NGOs and from people from the outside, this is like the moment when they can express their wishes when it comes to projects and measurements, measures want to have in their city and that should be put on the execution agenda. And after this, not really, and it's a democratic uh, law in Germany. And this is why <coughs> that appears as a new on the agenda comes really from the governmental body. And every new Um, then there is so-called Innovation Network Living Lab, and it's actually uh, a municipality-based op uh, operated network. 
that allows to work with third parties like companies, universities, uh, research, yeah, research units on diverse innovat innovation projects and ideas while securing the interest uh, of all involved parties. And here the main focus is really on, develop on developing innovate, in innovative projects. And the role division, <coughs> which is normally, uh, and the role division and like cooperation agreement, uh, cooperation agreement that is made between the city and the involved party, looks like this: that the city provides the urban space, like the city laboratory, let's say it like this, or resources for pilot projects which are normally unavailable for involved parties. So for example, public spaces or streets that are not really available for anyone. And um, the next and the third parties provide them, uh, the innovation. And <coughs> uh, in general, um, the funding of such projects, then there are two options. Either this is like this cooperation agreement that I was talking about, so it's like a win-win, non, motor, like a win-win situation, but really without a profit. Or there is an option <coughs> to uh, uh, to obtain uh, fundings from federal, state, or national funding programs. And um, it is also like this that city actually cannot purchase like directly the successful uh, pilot projects because of the tender law in Germany because it would be like unfair to say oh we uh, it's it's not that easy in Germany that just say it like this so if the pilot project is then successful and they're like uh, and the reasoning behind, for example, maybe making a tender the recommendation out of it are there, then there will be like a public tender <coughs> invitation on the uh, parties that would be interested interested in uh, execution uh, in executing this <coughs> uh, such idea. And last but not least, there is also so called so called Stadtlabor, so uh, city lab laboratory. And this is like this more participative uh, part of digital agenda. So it's like a co-innovation and co-working space for citizens, for startups, um, place for hackathons, makeathons, so that people can really be involved in a very active way in a digital transformation. For example, the like, okay, doesn't it work? Uh, the um, picture above, uh, above um, um, down is <coughs> shows families that uh, assemble, um, how do you call it? Uh, those sensors that um, measure the air quality. And it, yeah, so it's like actually a pretty fun thing. And as a summary, <coughs> um, there are like, I, I made a small list of things and that uh, a city might pursue, might take into the call while pursuing a smart city agenda. So it's very important to first really analyze the current situation of the city, the strength, weaknesses, the sinus milieu, the social structure, and to really define where we are now and what is possible for us. Um, <clears throat> then always in a context of national and global challenges because we do not really live on an island. Uh, there are a lot of things that are happening around us and they, have, it may, they may have a huge influence on the further development or the further local development. Uh, it is also very important to incorporate <coughs> integrated urban development concepts or their suitable uh, or their <coughs> sustainable inclusive character into the local digitalization strategy. Um, it, is, it is also very important to think about well thought uh, through policy cycle and maybe a governmental structure that really secures the idea that are commonly set. Then it is very, very important um, to always look on how we can really execute the goals that we have commonly set. So if we have uh, funding, funding options, if we have cooperation options. Um, 
an inno innovation network that would gather uh, different clusters from <clears throat> different industries would be also very helpful to work on innovations. And last but not least, <clears throat> it is very important to stay very consequ consequent, very flexible, uh, politically neutral, and very open towards innovations and towards including every milieu's city into our agenda. Yeah, that's everything. Thank you very much.